Welcome to the Spore Creature Creator Tutorial. My name is John Simino. I'm an animator and artist on Spore, and I'm going to walk you through building a creature. The first thing you need to know when you're using the editor is how to move the camera around. So simply just click your mouse button and drag around, and you can rotate the camera. You can also rotate the camera using these uh, arrow keys at the bottom. You notice next to them you have a plus and minus button that you can use to zoom in and out. You can also zoom in and out holding shift, right clicking and dragging up and down as well as using the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard. All right, now that you know how to use the camera, we can start building a creature. You'll notice that in the center of your dais, you have a torso. If you highlight over the torso, you'll see that there's a spine. If you use your mouse wheel, you can scale the spine up and down. If you select the torso, you'll notice you'll get these two arrows. If you pull on either one, you can stretch the spine out or shrink it down on either side. If you grab the torso underneath the spine, you can move it around anywhere on the dais. And if you grab the spine on the spine, you can actually change the shape of it. So I'm going to manipulate this guy into a position that I like. I think that'll work pretty well. So now that I have the body the way I want it, I'm going to start adding some parts. So you'll notice on the left, you have a whole selection of different parts. Um, eyes, legs, mouths. I'm going to grab a mouth and pop it on there. You notice when you let go, it selects and you had a few controls. The ball here controls rotation, so you can kind of angle your part and the arrows change the morphology, so you can kind of get a lot of variety this way. I'm going to leave it kind of like that. That looks good to me. Okay, so now I have a creature with a head, and I need to add some eyes, so I'm going to go over here and throw an eye on there. You can scale parts just like you scale a spine with the mouse wheel, so I'm going to make that a little smaller, bring it over in the front, angle it with the rotation ring, That looks good to me. Okay, so now I'm going to add some ears down here. Just snap it on there. Stretch it out with the morph handles. Rotate it back. Scale it down. Maybe angle it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now I have a creature with a finished head. If you select the head, or any part and pull it off, you'll notice it glows red. If I'm to let go right now, it deletes that and refunds all the DNA that I spent on the part into my bank. If I come down here and press this button, I will undo that change and get that back. So anytime you make a mistake, you can just hit undo. All right, so now I have a creature with a head and I need to give him some limbs. So I'm gonna go into the limb palette, grab a pair of legs and stick them on there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, that works. You notice if you look at limbs and you mouse over them, they are made up of joints. And uh, joints you can actually pull and manipulate to get, you know, any kind of length or shape you want. So you can make the creature look very different doing this, get a lot of variety. Um, I'm going to just go go with a normal leg though, like that. There are a few advanced controls in the editor that you can use as well. For instance, if you want to duplicate a part, like say you want another one of these legs exactly the same way, if you hold Alt while dragging it, it'll duplicate. So now he has four legs, and they're exactly the same. Let me change those a little, give a little room to his feet. Okay, um, now I'm going to add some arms. Uh, maybe this arm. Okay, now you can also, there are another, there's some more advanced controls, you can also break limbs apart. So if I want hold control and select a limb, I can tear it in half and then delete the part that I don't want. And now you just have this one simple limb. Also, I can duplicate it by holding alt like I did before. And if I hold control, it'll snap into an available joint. So this way you can kind of create long limbs, piece them together as much as you want. He doesn't seem to like it. Okay, so, but I think I'll just stick with kind of a traditional biped. Two legs, 
two arms. That skill, skill him up. Maybe scale up his forearms a bit, some shoulders. Make his hands a little bigger. I think I'm going to swap out his hands with something with claws. Make him look a little bit more intimidating. He likes that. All right, scale down his wrists. I think I'm pretty happy with this creature, so I'm just going to call him done. So now the next step is to name him. So I'm going to go down here, click the name button, and I can either think of a name and write it in, or use the dice, the die, to uh, randomly generate one. So that works, Konao. In the description section, I can write a sentence or two about my creature that other players might get to read if they are encountering him, like, uh, Konao is awesome. In the tag section, I can uh, add adjectives that describe my creature. So if someone's searching for someone like Konao, they will be able to find him easier. So I can just write, you know, he's brown, he's goofy, and he has claws. There. So now, you know, people will be able to look through and kind of find him a little bit more easier. All right, so when you're done, click on the button, and then come down here and hit Save. This saves your creature. And that is it. That is how you make a creature. All right, now it's time to paint our creature. So to paint, you go into the paint mode up here by clicking on the paintbrush icon. Paint mode is divided into two categories. We have the complete styles and the partial styles. So in complete styles, you have three pages of paint scripts made by artists that you can click on that will automatically paint your creature with all the three layers of paint that you can have. Um, just basically go through, add it to your creature, and see how he looks. If you want to have more control, you can go into partial styles and get control of all three layers, the base coat and the detail. If you'd like to start your creature with a blank canvas, I recommend going to the first page of each layer and clicking on the top left icon to delete that layer. So that deleted the detail. I'm going to go into coat and do the same thing. Delete that. Now you have a creature who just has a base layer coat. So I'm going to, the next step is to choose a color. And I think I want to make this guy blue. So I'm going to go up here, click on blue, and hold down. And you get a whole bunch of swatches to choose from. I'm going to pick kind of a grayish blue. That works. Once you have your color selected, you can go through and click on the different textures. And your color will stay there but you can see kind of some, you know, maybe make it shiny or make it bumpy. I think I'll go with this one here. Okay, once you're happy with that, go to the coat layer and select something from there. I think I'll take this one right here. This added some paint to his uh, back and his belly. I think I want to make that yellow. Go up to the colors and change that works. Okay, now I'm going to go to the detail layer and give him some stripes on his limbs. And that. that color is kind of clashing there, so I'm going to change that to maybe the more of a dark blue. There we go. Okay, so once you're happy with your creature, the next step is to save him. So I'm just going to come down here, click the save button. And that is it. Your creature is painted and you're all done.